Hi, uh, welcome to the third part of the master inversion control with Git, which is the advanced part. Uh, my name is Farad Aftakari and I'm the lecturer of this course. Uh, the content of this course has been created from Atlassian Git content and also my own personal experiences and some several uh, other mentioned contents. Nice to declare it. And before you start with the material, you need to make sure that you registered and got approved in this course uh, using this link for the e-learning portal of the class. Here are some typographical conventions which we use uh, throughout the course, so you may encounter them at the bottom of the slides. Uh, make sure to understand them because there's some sort of a help for going through the materials of the course. And we divided the content of the course into three difficulty level, easy, moderate, and hard. And it's up to some students if they want to just get familiar with the concepts or gain a deeper knowledge with uh, multiple kind of like contents. And here are the slides framework, which is uh, where you can see the titles, difficulty level indicator, uh, the page numbers or slide numbers, the content icons that we discuss and course name and section. And here is the content of this part. Uh, we're going to get familiar with git commit dash omen and git rebase, git reflog, uh, git remote, git fetch, git pull, git push, how to make a pull request and uh, for using branches, git branch and git merge. And here are the definitions which may encounter throughout the material, so make sure to understand them. All right, now let's get familiar with uh, what we call as rewriting history. So what is important in Git concept is to make sure that nothing is being lost along the way, especially with the committed that uh, we are actually sending to our branches. But it also gives the flexibility that for some cases you be in charge and uh, like managing the whole uh, workflow in order to sometimes uh, modify some things that has been happened uh, beforehand. So we have uh, three commands uh, that some of them also have some sort of options that we can also modify some stuff about them. So let's get familiar with them and what's the purpose of them and then in which situations we need to use them. Okay, the first one would be git command and then dash dash amend. So when you actually uh, committed your uh, most recent commit, there is a way to actually modify some things about that. So then the comment will be git commit dash dash amend. So it's not gonna go back way before, it's just gonna go back uh, to your last and uh, most recent commit. And this is actually two figures that uh, somehow helps you to understand the commits. Imagine they are like different commits and then this is going to be the latest one. So basically, if you stage a commit, then by this actually you're like somehow getting back like it's nothing has been the stage before. This is all it does. And what is actually is important here is you should never ever uh, commit uh, dash dash amend to be applied in a public commits because there are developers maybe working on that uh, yeah, like some sort of a that kind of a snapshot of like a repository then by doing that it's like that git reset uh, situation that then their base of the project will be gone so there's nothing like for them to actually work on that so it's like getting rid of that commit so it's not nice to do that for uh, public commits uh, but of course for your local repository for your local branches uh, or the committers that you haven't pushed to public uh, place, then it's totally fine. And the next one would be really interesting. It's a super advanced actually command, uh, nothing for beginners and we don't really expect them to master that, but it's nice to see it's there. 
Uh, so when you are like applying some changes and there are like some sort of a, uh, conflict along the way, then with Git rebase, you're actually modifying and fixing those uh, conflicts. All git rebase does is to move the branches to a new base commit. So that's the whole thing. And it, by that, they're trying to fix these conflicts. So when you apply this git rebase, uh, like the base, all it does is also uh, uh, use the base as that certain commit that actually uh, has been committed. Especially when you are working in a team of developers and then while you started working with the project and then you had some uh, changes going on with the commits, the master plan, also, uh, master, uh, sorry, branch also evolve and uh, other developers push uh, other commits there. So then you need to also uh, make the base of your branch the same as the master. So this is a very handy way to do that. And yes, this is actually a very nice figure that you can see. Uh, you are setting the base of your feature branch, same as master branch. So all of those commits are also being applied for your feature branch. And actually, it's also very nice to for you to search more about the concept of three way merge and uh, fast forward merge. In some situations, uh, one is like better choice than the other one, but it's a kind of a very, very advanced topic. And I don't want to scare the students for like these like kind of more advanced concepts. But once you're working in a team and uh, by doing a little bit research, then you can understand the dif uh, difference between them. But it's nice that we get familiar with Git rebase command. And then for these like very, very rare situations, with the conflicts and it's nice that you also gain a deeper knowledge by yourself. And actually, as we had this uh, tip with git uh, commit comment, we also have this tip with git rebase comment that do not rebase public history of a repository a branch. And the reason is also obvious because there are other developers working with that the snapshots and then uh, it's also going to change their own base and it's a mess that if it happens. And with these situations, I also recommend you to always uh, discuss it before apply these changes to the public branches, I don't know, with your supervisor or with the team leader or I don't know, your colleague before, well, to make sure nothing is going to be messed up. And then also we have an option dash I for Git rebase. It gives you some flexibility. So instead of like uh, applying all of those commits, then lets you to somehow manipulate these commits, uh, like some sort of a cleaning up job for you for the history of those commits. So it's some sort of advanced part for advanced, already advanced comment. <laughs> yeah, if you're also interested, you can also find out more. And here is also the actual comment, git rebase dash i and then the base. All right, now let's get familiar with git reflog. Uh, what it does, it actually uh, keeps the old state of branches and uh, give you some sort of uh, ability to get back to those states. Uh, there's this mechanism that we call reflog uh, in Git and then uh, it's like taking advantage of that mechanism. And here are, well, the actual command and then uh, some options that also it gives you. 
So by applying that, it shows you the reflect for the local repository and then with dash dash relative dash date shows the reflect with relative date information. Right. In some cases, well, not some cases, in most of the cases when you like having progress with your branches, then you need to sync the public branches with your own work because there is no purpose of like you uh, having your own branches and then going so far with like development and modifications and then finding yourself in a way that in a situation that the public branches are like has nothing to do with the changes you are doing with your own branches. So. Uh, there are some commands that we use in order to sync these uh, changes. Let's see and let's get familiar with them. They're also very interesting uh, comments. And they are not very advanced topics, actually. They are very useful for beginner uh, Git users as well. Because syncing uh, and collaboration is a very, very important and like the whole purpose of like using uh, Git, actually. Uh, in order to create uh, connections to other repositories, you can use git remote command. Uh, it's an interesting concept that you be familiar that the connections are more like bookmarks rather than links. So there's like some definition, some information about the address of the repositories and how you can get connected with them. So that's why we call them bookmark rather than like a direct link. And of course, uh, your repository can be uh, linked to or uh, connected to multiple repositories. Actually, as you already have got familiar with the whole Git concept, uh, it gives you some flexibility. The changes are not constantly being uh, shared or synced. So that's why this remote connection is also important that you establish your connection and then uh, based on your own uh, situation, uh, push or pull like the changes, which later we're going to get familiar with these other two comments. And uh, we already got familiar with git clone command. So what it also does as an external step when it's like copying that repository to your local computer, it also creates the origin remote uh, connection with that like repository that you cloned. Uh, it's also interesting that you uh, get familiar with these protocols that uh, we can use uh, when we have like the connection with HTTP uh, protocol. Uh, it's like a easy way to allow anonymous read only access to repositories. But when you want to actually sync uh, the changes, then we need to use SSH uh, protocol. It somehow added uh, extra security measurement for your connection. And here are different uh, options that you have. Git remote, git remote dash v, and then git remote add the name and then the URL. And also git remove rm. So what it does is actually remove that connection. And also re rename is also, well, self-explanatory that it renames uh, the remote connection from the old name to the new name. All right, now let's get familiar with git fetch. So what git fetch command actually does is uh, importing commits from a remote repository and putting it in a whole uh, new branch other than uh, the normal local branch that you're actually working and like uh, having like for your own self. And here is also uh, the options. You have git fetch and then remote and then git fetch remote if there is a branch for that, like remote which branch. 
All right, now it's a very, very practical and interesting comment, which is git pull. So there, is, there are situations that sometimes when you actually uh, clone a repository, uh, sorry, uh, clone a branch, then other developers uh, push their commits uh, for their branch. So you're, uh, for instance, if you're using master branch and there's this origin master branch, uh, your own local master branch is a bit outdated. So by using git pull, you're actually pulling those commits and then merging them with your own uh, like local branch. So that is all it does. And then we have git pull remote name, what is like the remote branch name, and then git pull dash dash rebase uh, that remote branch name. And uh, in the other, well, side of the story situation, then we have git push. So sometimes when you work with uh, your branch, then you commit, you send like some commits to your local branch, and then you want to affect these changes to that origin uh, branch uh, as well. So you push your commits uh, to that actually origin branch. Very simple, very interesting. Like it's a somehow all the time situation when you modify some stuff and then they got finalized and they are ready for uh, development and like joining the other uh, part of the project. So that's how you push them. And then it they also being included in your uh, remote branch or something. And then they also have this uh, option of force pushing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice that also for yourself, uh, get to know more about this option as well. And then we have different uh, options, git push and then git push dash dash all. And then dash dash force and dash dash text. Make sure to also read it and get a clue that what are like the extra uh, flexibility they give to you. Okay, now let's get familiar how we can uh, create a pull request. So when we are collaborating and working in a group, uh, when we are sending our changes and the commits to the remote uh, repository, then it's a process which is pull request that we create this pull request and then assign this task to another developer to come and review our progress and make sure with another perspective and another opinion that it's not like messing up with anything or the code is clean and everything is like according to the guidelines and after those review uh, task and then they uh, merge these uh, changes to the uh, other branch. So it's like this added uh, opinion, which makes the whole process much safer, much nicer to collaborate and work with each other, rather than just everybody push their codes and then end up in a situation that like something's being broken or mess up the whole code base. So yeah, actually, uh, here is a screenshot which we have in the practical part. Actually, we're gonna see them in action. So what it does is like uh, compare the base uh, branch with the branch that you just created and then you uh, push your changes. And then after that, uh, you actually see what is like the codes that has been changed and like modifications and everything. And then you'll be able to this button become enabled and then you'll be able to actually press it and create your pull request. And here are the steps. Uh, well, in other uh, Git hosting services also, it's almost the same situation. If you're not using GitHub, 
Bitbucket or I don't know the other services what we're gonna try in github so you need to go and navigate to the main page of the repository and then uh, use these compare branches and then uh, have your uh, branch as like which branch to be the base and then which branch to be the something that to be compared to and then you actually can press uh, the pull request button by clicking new pull request and then you can provide other information that will be in charge of like reviewing that and then you'll be able to create that pull request So here also a very nice uh, figures for you to see like what are the exact steps that you need to actually follow. There could be like a small changes with the user interface because these websites also are evolving all the time and adding more functionality. Uh, so they may not be 100% the same, but the whole concept is the same. You can also add some comments, uh, explanation or something, and then create your pull request. Okay, now let's get familiar with the comments that we can use to use the branches. We have git branch and git merge. Now let's get familiar with git branch. Uh, it's a very nice and handy tool when you want to create, list, rename or delete branches. And very easy to actually use. So let's see what are the options, what are the purpose of using them. We have git branch, which lists all the branches in your repository, then git branch branch name which you can create a new branch call well whatever you call this here as a branch it's a variable so you don't necessarily you, do, you shouldn't actually put them inside of this uh, characters and the interesting part is uh, when you are using this command you are not checking out to that new branch so the branch is being created but your current branch would be whatever it was and you are running the command and then we have git branch dash d the branch name which deletes uh, the specific branch which you provide the name here and then we have dash d capital which force delete that specific branch so the uh, difference is like if the other one has like on merge changes then it doesn't let you do that it gives you some sort of a message but this one don't care doesn't care just delete it and then we also have git branch dash m the branch name which rename the current branch to the name that you declare here here also we have a figure and also in the next slide another figure uh it's like a sample that you see like we have different branches the status of the commits and then the versions and also here the other like view and then we have like branches and then the commits all right, now let's get familiar with git checkout command, uh, which is a very important and very interesting command. Uh, what it does uh, in this purpose, it lets you navigate between the branches uh, that created by git branch. And here uh, there are options and commands that we have. We have git checkout uh, existing branch and then git checkout dash b. Uh, which also creates and check out to that new branch. So the difference between git checkout dash b and then the branch name is also goes to that branch that you created. That's the difference actually. And then we also have git merge command. So in cases that you have like uh, some branches it's like somehow joining and merging these branches together. And for uh, merging branches, there are two uh, ways of doing that. We call them fast forward merge 
or three-way merge. It's interesting to get familiar with them, understand them, what is the concept. So let's just briefly get familiar with the whole concept of fast forward and three-way merge. So in fast forward merge situation, uh, which is much easier than three-way merge, it's a linear actually path from the current branch to the targeted branch. Let's see this uh, actually figure here. You can see the master is here and some features is here. So before we merge them together, this is like the situation, but then with fast forward merge, uh, the head from here goes here and then all of these commits also being merged. Very easy, no conflict or trouble. But then we have three-way merge. So in some situations, there is not a linear path for those targeted branches. So if you go to this other figure, you can see that uh, the other branch went some other way and then the other one is also progressing. So it's kind of dif more difficult to actually merge these two branches together. So what is necessarily is a three-way uh, merge, especially with resolving conflicts. Like there are some conflicts, some files, they are not matching with each other. There are like some changes, fundamental changes that needs to be fixed and then you'll be able to actually merge them. It's a very actually interesting concept that you also gain deeper uh, do a bit of research and find out more about this uh, actually three-way merge by yourself as well. It's way out of the scope of this course and I'm not gonna bore other students with this like kind of rare situations, but very important and it's nice to actually try to uh, find out and do a bit of research by yourself. Okay, and then in many uh, cases, when we start a project, we need to ignore some file formats or some directories because, well, if you are familiar with .NET framework development, there are some directories that uh, when you compile your project, the output of the projects being stored them and all the time they are changing, they are not nothing directly related to the development of the project, but some sort of an output of these uh, compiles. And then also some other uh, file formats, some specific files, for instance, if you are storing some local uh, passwords or credentials. So then you can be on top of managing uh, to ignore those files to be shared and synced with uh, your branches and then uh, don't make these uh, files to be shared along the way. That's the whole compass of like ignoring files. All right. And here is also some other links uh, that you can actually gain a bit more knowledge with this related fields as a further study. And feel free to send us feedbacks, if you report any mistakes, if you encounter any mistakes and always feel free to suggest ideas about the topics. And if you want to learn a bit more time to time, we modify the contents and all the students can also get access to the new material. So you'll be in charge of actually this kind of stuff with contributing from your side. And it was a fire, like a final part of this, the final uh, slides of this advanced part of the course, mastering version control with Git. And I hope you had a nice time and thank you for your consideration and looking forward to see you on the last part which is going to be the practical part uh, practical part which we're going to somehow uh in practice try these different commands and then learn more in like practice way looking forward to see you in the next part and have a good day or evening and my name was Farhad Aftekari and I was a lecturer of this course and looking forward to see you bye